This video is to teach you the names of the Janome sewing machine and a little information about the functions as well. So to begin with, we're going to look at this area here and I'm going to zoom in. So the first part we're going to look at is the take up lever. So you can open this and here you have a silver lever here that goes up and down when the machine is going or you're using the hand wheel. Now when the take up lever goes up and down, so does the needle down here. Now it's really important when you're sewing that you must start and stop with the take up lever in the up position. If you start or stop with it part way down, you might find that the needle is stuck in your material or you go to pull out your material and it gets knotted. That is because this is part way through a stitch. When it is in the up position, it has completed a stitch. So you shouldn't have any issues removing your work if it is in the up position. The next thing we're going to look at is the presser foot. Now the presser foot is this metal and plastic foot here that is used to hold your fabric in place. Now at the back here there is a lever which puts your presser foot on and off. Sorry, up and down I should have said. <laughs> but you can actually take off your presser foot as well. That's what the presser foot looks like. And you can change your presser foot to a different presser foot for different functions. This is an A, this is just for regular sewing, so that's what we'll be using. Now here we have the bobbin housing and cover. So if you move that little black section to the right, that will spring the housing cover open. And it will show you where you put your bobbin. Now your bobbin is a plastic um, disc that you wind thread onto to stitch. So you have a top thread up here and you have a bobbin thread. And if you look at the housing cover, you have some guidelines on there and also a threading guide for your bobbin as well. And the next thing we're going to look at is the thread guide plate. Now that is up here. It's a little bit hard to see, but there's a little plate in here that guides your thread into the right position. Next, we have our pattern selections. So we have all these selections available to us when we're sewing. We will most often use stitch 13, which is straight stitch, or possibly stitch 12, which is zigzag. Next to that, we have our stitch settings. So the top bar that slides across is the width selector. So this is your stitch width. And a really easy way to remember it is you've got this little zigzag here. It's kind of like a W. You can remember that by remembering its width because the zigzag is like a W. And so that changes the stitch when it stitches from side to side. With straight stitch, it's set to zero. Down the bottom, we have the stitch length selector. So that changes the length of the stitch to make it smaller or bigger. This is usually set on 2.5 for straight stitch. And then at the front of the machine down the bottom, we have the reverse button. So that's this one here. And what you do when you're sewing is you hold it in and it makes your stitch go backwards. So when you start sewing and finish sewing, you always use a reverse stitch because you want to lock in your thread. If you don't use the reverse stitch, your stitch line you've created could come undone easily. Now moving on, we're looking at the top of the machine. Now you see here on the right, you've got a little bit that you can use to open the top of the machine. And you've got lots of stuff happening in here. So we're gonna go through the things you do use and there are also a couple things in here which you shouldn't actually change the setting of. So we'll go through that as well. 
So the first thing we have is the pressure dial, which is this one here. That should always be set to three. And that's one thing you don't change. That changes the pressure on the presser foot. Next, we have the thread guide, which is this little black ring here. And that guides your thread when you're threading the top thread. So your thread goes around and down the thread guide plate here. Next, we have the tension dial, which is this one here. Now, this should always be set to four. This is another thing you don't need to change. And that adjusts the tension of your thread. So if you're sewing and your tension looks tight or loose, maybe someone's changed this, even though it shouldn't be changed. Sometimes it happens. Next, we have the bobbin winding thread guide, which is this one here. And that's to wind the bobbin thread. You can see there's a little image here of a bobbin. And that's just to indicate that your thread goes around your thread guide and around your bobbin winding thread guide as well. Next thing we have is a spool pin, which is this part here. Now your reel of cotton goes on here before you thread your machine. Once you put your, spool, your reel of cotton on your spool pin, you use the thread stopper to lock it into place. Next you have your bobbin winder, which is here. Now that clicks over and back. Obviously it clicks over when you're winding your bobbin. When you're not winding your bobbin, it should be in the left position. Now that's everything you need to know on the top. Now we're going to look at the side of the machine. Now looking at the side of the machine, this part here is called the hand wheel. And when you turn that, that makes the take up lever and the needle go up and down. In the middle of that, you have the clutch knob, which go, comes out. And what that does, it's similar to the clutch in a manual car. It disengages the engine of the sewing machine to allow you to wind the bobbin. Because you don't want to be winding the bobbin while your sewing machine is still sewing. You need the two to work separately. Now, if you've got a newer machine, you won't have this. And the bobbin will wind when you click it over. If you remember up the top, you click that over to the right. Next, we have our pattern selector dial. Now that changes your stitch setting. So like I said, normally we, we use straight stitch, which is 13, but you may want to change it to another stitch. We also have a power outlet here, which is where our foot pedal cord and power cord gets plugged in, which looks like this, and an on off button. So those are the names of the machine parts and their basic uses.